So I'm here at the Smoky Mountains with my family, and I wanted a chance to take my boys to the top of the Smokies so they can look out and truly appreciate how amazing Mother Nature is. And while we were at the top, we had a chance to get on the Appalachian Trail. There was a trailhead where you could get on it. And my boys had never heard of the Appalachian Trail, so I got a chance to explain to them you know, how far the Appalachian Trail is and how long it actually takes to hike it, and they were blown away. But before we got on the Appalachian Trail, we had a chance to either go one direction or the other. You know, which path do we take? And my boys looked to me and said, Dad, which way is the right way to go? So here my boys are leaning on their father, depending on their dad to guide them to make sure that they don't go the wrong way and they don't get lost. And in that moment, I started thinking about my own life. Whenever I went to my father for advice on which path to go and specifically what career path. And it was kind of funny because if you've been watching the YouTube channel at all, you know that rich dad, poor dad, had a huge impact on my life. It was one of, by far, one of the most influential books I've read that just had such an amazing impact. But what I didn't realize when I read that book that it was actually a foreshadow of an occurrence that's gonna happen in my own life with my own dad, my own poor dad, and my own rich dad. And as I'm on this path with my boys, on this trail with my boys, it made me just reflect on that. And I just wanna share some of that journey with you today. So if you're not familiar with my story, I was a finance major in college and right out of college, I became a financial advisor. And how that came was because while I was doing college, I got an internship at a local investment firm. The internship turned into a part-time job while still in college. And then I got offered a junior broker position by the top producer in the office. And initially I turned it down, but that's a whole other story. But I got a chance to work with the top producer. So this guy was a million dollar producer. He was a high achiever. And the position that was offered as a junior broker was, I got paid a base salary of $18,500. What? And also we shared any commission and fees that I brought in. So initially their arrangement was, I was going to be cold calling for him. So yes, I was that telemarketer that was interrupting your dinner and finding out if you were an investor and if you were open to new investment ideas from time to time. Yeah, that was my pitch. So that's what I would do all day every day was cold call and find new clients for him to close. And that's what we did for over a year. But the funny thing is this is exactly what happened where I was supposed to be the cold caller and find new people and then bring them in for him to close. But we just didn't have a really good system set up. So what ended up happening was is that I was cold calling and I was bringing them in and I was closing them without his assistance. And let me tell you, I loved it. I don't know if I actually loved the cold calling aspect, but I definitely loved getting people in the office, earning their trust and having them become a client, you know, closing the sale, always be closing. So this was our arrangement for a year. And I just remember it was a Friday afternoon. He called me into his office and he sat me down and this is what he told me. He's like, Jeff, I enjoy working with you. Initially when I hired you, you know, I wanted to bring in somebody to help me grow my business, but I've recognized that I don't really need somebody else to close my business because I can do that already. What I need is more of an administrative assistant, somebody that's, that's just gonna help with the day-to-day -day operations, you know, not so much the cold calling aspect. And he's like, I enjoy working with you. I mean, you have what it takes. I want you to stay on my team. I want you to be a part of this team. But I also recognize that you can do this on your own. You don't need me to close clients. Heck, you've been doing it on your own for the past year. So I want to make you an offer. This is the offer that I want to make you. It wants you to take the weekend and consider this. I want you to either stay on my team as an assistant, not so much as a producer, as a closer, or I'm gonna allow you to break off from me, become your own financial advisor. You can keep all the clients that you've closed, but I'm gonna take away your salary. And that was the offer. And he gave me the weekend to think about it. Now remember, I was, I was a young kid. I was a year out of college. And yes, that salary wasn't a lot, 18,500, but I didn't need a lot to live off of. So this was like a big decision for me because 
it, it was that security aspect, right? I mean, we all want a little bit of security in our life, that predictable income. And so what he was offering was either this continue to get a predictable income. Oh, and I didn't mention this. He was going to increase my salary. I don't remember how much it was. I think he was going to go from like 18,000 up to 30,000. So I was going to get like almost a $12,000 increase of guaranteed income. Or the flip side was, is that I was going to roll the dice and see if I could make this on my own. Now, if you don't know this as a financial advisor, I mean, once you take away that salary, what you make is what you bring in. You know, what you, what you eat is what you kill. So if I was not bringing in new clients, I wasn't making any money. So it was a scary proposition. It was something for me to really consider. And I wasn't really quite sure what the right direction to go was. I had a big decision to make, so I had to make a few phone calls. And the two phone calls that I made were one, to my real dad, and the second one was to my stepdad. So you're probably wondering, what's the significance of this? You know, what does this have to do with rich dad, poor dad? Okay, you're a financial advisor, you gotta make a big decision about your career. So here was the cool thing. So I'd already had read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, but I still did not see the connection here. So my real dad, you know, my real dad had dropped out of college. Um, he finally graduated when he was in his late 50s, uh, had a job with the state, never really made a whole lot of money, got passed over for promotions time and time again, just because he didn't have the credentials, didn't have the experience to do so. My stepdad, uh, my mom, you know, my parents got divorced when I was a kid, very, very young. Uh, my stepdad, I don't know, really know what he did. I just know that he was in sales. But there, here's what I also know, is that back in the 80s, my stepdad was the guy that had the car phone. And if you're a millennial watching this, you're probably wondering what in the heck is a car phone? The car phones were cell phones before you had cell phones. You had to plug them into your car and that's how you can make calls. Either way, he had a car phone when nobody had a car phone. He wore business suits every single day. He always had cufflinks. He just, he drove a Cadillac. I mean, he just had money. Like I said, I don't really know what he did. I just know compared to my real dad, we just always went on trips and had a lot more different things, a lot more tools or a lot more toys uh, that my real dad had. So whenever I had to make this big decision, like I said, these are the two people I had to call, my dad and my stepdad. I called my dad first, explained to him the situation, and just seeking guidance on what he thought I should do. And I, I don't remember the exact words that he said, but I just remember listening to him, you know, kind of talk out loud on what made the most sense. And I remember his rationale was, well, you know, this is, this is a good opportunity either way, but it sounds like with staying on his team and getting that guaranteed salary, you know, that would give you some stability. Uh, and then maybe a year from now, you know, you could ask about, you know, becoming your own financial advisor again. You know, maybe you just need some more experience and just having that guaranteed income would be the best bet for you. And I remember he told me that advice and obviously it's my dad, so I'm gonna listen to him. But there was still something about that that just didn't resonate with me, you know, didn't really light that fire in, in my gut. But you know, I, I thanked him for the advice. Um, I told him I was gonna think about it some more uh, and I still had another call to make. Now I didn't tell my real dad I was gonna call my stepdad, but I knew that's what I had to do. So I called my stepdad and I remember him talking it out loud and just that rationale. And I remember this is essentially what he told me. He's like, Jeff, you, you've already, sounds like you've already done it, you know? I mean, you've already shown him and yourself that you have what it takes. And it seems like it would be a lot more fun and more of a challenge if you went off on your own and went out and got more clients, like you, you've already done that, but you know, get even more clients and just really the sky's the limit. And I remember when he told me that, I was just like, yeah, that's exactly what I want. That's exactly what the decision is. And even though like I, I told myself and told him I was gonna think about it some more, I knew what I was gonna do. Like I knew what the right decision was. So I remember I went into the office Monday morning and I told my mentor, the, the top producer in my office, the guy that took a chance on me and hiring me that I was going on my own, that I was gonna become my own financial advisor. And you know, it, like nothing really changed that day. Like I still had the same office. I still was wearing the same clothes. I still had the same business card, but still there was this scary yet liberating feeling of knowing that I was in charge of my destiny. I was in charge of my future. And that just put so much more 
I, I don't know, it just put so much more fire in me. It put me, it put so much more drive, put so much more excitement. You know, it's like I, I already had proven myself, but yet it, it was like the next challenge. You know, now I could prove myself without having that guaranteed salary as small as it was as a security cushion. And I just remember, I just went after it. You know, I was cold calling even more. I was doing more seminars. I was doing whatever it took to show myself, my boss, my peers, my family, my friends that I was going to make it. Now, I don't want to discredit my dad, you know, for telling me to take the safe route and take the salary position because it was actually my real dad that encouraged me to become a finance major to begin with. So without his encouragement to becoming a finance major, you know, this never even would have been an option. But it still makes you wonder because we all will go to somebody for advice, whether there be big life decisions, small life decisions. We all have those people in our life that we go to, that we seek, you know, their opinion, their thoughts, their views on what we should do. This could be your parents, it could be grandparents, it could be a close family member, it could be close friends. And it just makes you have to think, who are we going to, to get this advice on these major life decisions? Now, I think it's important that we go to several different people to get different points of view. But just make sure when you go to these people that you're not taking their opinion, their thoughts on what you should do and make that the end all be all for your decision. Make sure that you're going to several different people, getting their point of view, but then also you have to ask yourself and remind yourself, what was their background? You're like, what, where are they coming from? What have they had in their experience that's going to be helpful in your experience? And as I mentioned with my real dad, you know, he dropped out of college. He never had a business. He never made more than, I know he didn't make six figures a year. I don't think he even made more than $50,000 per year. He didn't have any investments. He struggled with that his entire life. So yes, he's my real dad and he knows me better than anybody else, but he didn't have any other experiences that were even close to what I was going through. And then you look at my stepdad, you know, who he was in sales, uh, he was in business, he wore suits and cufflinks and had the car phone and drove a Cadillac and, you know, took all these amazing trips. So he had some more experience than my real dad had and he could shine a light into where I was at in my real life. And that's what you have to do. You have to find somebody that not only knows you, but could also speak from that moment of where you're at in your life. Because if you're wanting to start a business and if you're asking somebody advice on how to start a business, but you're asking somebody that has never started a business, has never ran a successful business, then what are they going to be able to offer to you? Nothing. So just keep that in mind. Like we all want to go to our parents. We all want to go to those close loved ones to get that advice that we that we think is going to be valuable to us. And there is some value in that. But you think about, you know, in Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he had his poor dad that worked from the state. You know, his advice was go to college, get a good job, you know, and just save. Where he had his best friend's dad to where, you know, he was a real estate investor and just was uber successful and had money and money and money and wealth. So whose advice did he follow? His, his real dad or the rich dad, his best friend's dad? It was his rich dad and you've seen the success that he had. So that's what I did in my own life. You know, I looked at the two dads that I had, the poor dad and the rich dad, and the rich dad was the one that I knew was going to offer me the most beneficial advice for me in my situation. So when I first read Rich Dad Poor Dad, I had no clue that I was basically reading my autobiography. You know, basically I was gonna be at a point in my life where I was at a crossroads of needing some advice and I went to both my, my poor dad and my rich dad to see what was the best decision for me. I know I'm not the only one. You might not have a rich dad and poor dad in your life, but you have two different people that you could seek advice from. Have you done it? I'm curious if you have, what advice do they give you? What advice do those people give you in your life and which one did you listen to? Did you take the advice that was more like the poor dad or did you take the advice that was more like the rich dad? Let me know in the comments below what was that big decision you had to take in your life and whose advice did you follow? 
If you like this video, I think you know what to do. Give it a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, come on join the GFC TV family. I got more video content coming your way. And maybe next time I'll bring you on a vacation just like here so you can enjoy the beautiful Smoky Mountains. All right, until next time, reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, only you can make it awesome. See you on the flip side. Peace. Oh my gosh, I forgot what I said. <laughs> what did I say? What's my story? This real tiny.